I greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence, reverence to reading the word of the Lord, we're going to stand up those who can in Isaiah. Isaiah, Old Testament. Isaiah 21. Isaiah 21, verses 11 and 12. The last song that was sang, it said, uh, there's a part of the song that says, in spite of uh, the danger, we have nothing to fear. I pleaded, God heard me and brought me it brought salvation to me. And in the the other the other passage of uh, of the song, or the part of the song, there's a phrase that says the following: Even the uh, the Son Himself came to save us. And this is what we are talking about tonight. I pleaded. The Lord heard me and brought salvation to me. And that's why there is no danger or anything f to fear. Prophecy against Edom. Uh, Turn over verse 11, 12 and says the following. The burden is against Duma. He calls to me out of CR. Watch me, watchman. What what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire. Return, come back. Lord, we praise you because you, you are thankful to Lord for this evening of fellowship with you. because we believe that you have already operated in the midst of the songs that have been sang, and we plead that you may complete your blessing in the message, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The brother may be seated. The text that we read speaks of a weight, a judgment, of a sentence. But there, there are many verses in the Bible that before the Lord has shown, that before the sentence, the weight of the judgment, He always gives men an escape, an opportunity for men to get out of the weight of the sentence of, and of the judgment. There's a verse in, there is a verse in the Bible that says, In wrath, remember mercy. And the mercy of the Lord is the cause of man not to be consumed. And the word of the Lord says that His mercy, they have no end, and they renew every morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And here, there is a judgment. judgment. There is a weight, there is a sentence of the Lord. And the judgment was against Domar, Duma. Duma is a region in the Arab region and the descendants of Abraham through Ishmael. It's a place in the desert. And there, in Duma, a distant place, we can say, from Israel, a distant place from the Lord, somebody cries out. And when somebody cries out, somebody is doing a plea, is making a request, is alerting someone else, is seeking help. And here, the person uh, shouts out. 
and we also shout when things are difficult and we may cry out because it's hurting so it's showing the moment of anguish and sadness and pain and suffering a mom moment also of lack of knowledge and maybe the greatest affliction and anguish the greatest sadness of that person the reason why this person was crying was a moment of uncertainty uncertainty that this person was leaving so this person may cry out make may make a plea because the cry of that person the plea of that person is that the person wanted to understand what was going on what is happening what is occurring and here it speaks of a moment a moment which is at night a moment of darkness a moment uncertainty a mo moment of being def undef undefined a moment of danger because the night the darkness brings dangers the darkness it's a place that we can say we're in a place that we don't know an unknown place maybe the like a knowledge bring this moment of anguish and fear so then the person asks a question what happened during the night what is going on and sometimes maybe you who entered here tonight you are asking this question probably you today your soul is crying out is crying out for help is your soul wants to know what is happening there's a song that we sing that says the following tired soul do not des des despair wait in the Lord and there's another one that says the sign of the end uh, being fulfilled in our generation all the work er, the earth anguishes and moans and the creation and the darkness comes upon the world and the signs are all out there the prophetic moment of the night is here we, together with this prophetic moment of the night comes the tribulation the anguish and uncertainties the, the pains the disappointment the the fear the, the fear of uh, war and those things may be going on and we may uh, be asking ourselves what's going on I don't understand what's happening so it is a cry what happened tonight maybe you're going through this and asking yourself this question what is happening what's happening to my life and what is happening with humanity so why so many problems and adversities this is a prophetic moment that the, the world is living and the church is living and then that person in the passage we read he asks this question to the guard the Bible says the the Lord is a faithful guard he is not going to he is not going to sleep the guard of Israel the Lord is one to that guards you he's at, at the shadow of at your right the Sun is not going to bother you in the morning in the moon at night the Lord will protect your soul blessed be the name of the Lord so the guard of the soul the guard of Israel our Lord he is he's inside he's awake he's seeing everything that is happening he has all the knowledge of the moment in which we are living once the disciples of Jesus when Jesus had already resurrected the disciples asked him will you restore at this time Israel and Jesus answered 
is is not up to you to know the, the time and the seasons, but you will receive the virtue of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Lord is showing in this text that we just read. There is a way, there is a sentence, there is a judgment upon the world. But the guard of Israel is paying attention to all things. He is awake. And maybe you came tonight to ask the God of Israel, to ask the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit what is happening, what is going on. And it was at night. And the guard has one answer to give. All the cry of help, every plea, every supplication, every prayer, the Lord always has an answer to give us. There's a song that says, Lord, when you seek you, angels come and bring the answers from the Lord. So the person comes and asks and please. The person wants to know and wants to understand what's happening. And the watchman answers, the morning comes. The tears may last the entire night, but the morning comes in the morning. So he speaks of the morning. So we live in this moment of tribulation, the moment of the night, the moment of the shout, here comes the groom. But it is also a moment of joy for the church, because in spite of the darkness and, and the tribulations and difficulties, the sun of justice is shining, the morning star will come up. Jesus will come back, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what he was saying. The moment of darkness is going to come to an end for the church. Jesus is coming. He's returning. The morning will come for the church. A new day. The watchman, he was, um, was vigilant during the night to deliver the people from any problem, to keep the people informed of the moment that was happening. Because there was a surprise attack and something against the people. The watchman, the guard, had the, the duty of inform the people so that the, the people could get ready. And the Bible says that we need, need to be prepared for this moment. You need to have uh, a belt around your waist and, and your lamps be lit. The guard was saying, the moment is coming, it's the morning, so get ready. Because Jesus is coming back, blessed be the name of the Lord. A moment of trial, tribulation, anguish. But there is a moment coming up, a moment of joy. When the period of night comes to an end, the guard, my brother and sister, the guard would go home. When this moment of tribulation ends, the church will be in the house of the Father. We're going back home. But he says something interesting, and the morning comes. But also comes the night. The morning comes. The church will be raptured. But after the morning comes, and the church is raptured, and also then will come the night. There will come the night. You think that things are bad right now? After the rapture of the church, things are going to get worse. The night will come. He's not going to say, he doesn't say the morning come, the night, and then the morning again. No, that's not how he says. So this is an alert, uh, a warning. You need to be prepared. You need to leave in the morning, the, the lighting, the first rays of light of the, of the morning. You need to leave this experience of the Lord. We need to be prepared with the moment of salvation. Because salvation is, is at stake here. And God protects the soul of man. That's why we need to be alerted. That's why the watchman was saying, the guard was saying, 
the morning comes, but also comes the night. And instead of fall, if you want to ask, ask. Sometimes people have doubts regarding a situation, one or the other, if Jesus is going to come back, yes or no, if he is going to be the one to save men with doubts and uncertainties. What I ask, you can ask. Because the God, the Holy Spirit always has an answer to give you, to give to us. But it is interesting to know that He asked us to come back, return. The doubts in your heart, the uncertainty regarding the prophetic moment we're living, you're not understanding. We at the door of the rapture of the church. Jesus is coming. He's returning. Want to know a little more about that? Want to get ready for this moment? You can ask. But he says the following. Return. The guard was in Israel. The person that was shouting was was in Duma. So the person was distant from the Lord. And guard of Israel was calling this person. Return. Why do I ask someone to return? Why? Because the person was there, but left. So he was speaking about a person that was in the presence of the Lord, that stayed in the presence of the Lord in the past, that was in Israel, was beside the guard, that had the knowledge, complete knowledge of the project of God, but distanced themselves from the project, and now went far away, and now that person was lost without knowing what was going on because of all of this. Why all of this? Because it was a moment of darkness. Because the person distanced themselves from the light. Why? Because they didn't walk in the path of the Lord. Because if we, we walk in the light, like in Jesus is, we have fellowship and the blood of Jesus purifies us of everything. So the guard speaks to the person and says, Return. I can't come back to the Father. Come back to the presence of the Lord. Because this is God's plan for your life. If you are uh, anguish, you have uh, an uncertainty. If there are questions that they have no answer, Christ is the answer. Come back. The Father is waiting for you. This is the desire of the Father that you come back, that you return to His presence. This is the call of the Holy Spirit to you, my brother and sister, tonight. Come back. It is the time to return. It is the time to be once again the presence of the Lord, to be in fellowship with the Lord. Come back. And then he says the following. You know what he says? Come back. What did Jesus say when, when he looks at the people that are anguished and sad? without hope. He says, Come upon me, those who are tired and overloaded, and I will re relief, bring relief to you. So the God of Israel, the Holy Spirit has relief to you, has peace, has consolation, has refreshing, has salvation through Christ Jesus. Come to the presence of the Lord. Come to the Lord. Why? Why coming? Coming and continue coming. Because Jesus is the path. Go to Jesus. Have a meeting with Jesus. It's to accept salvation in Christ Jesus. And leave the moment of the morning. It's to participate of the rapture of the church. It's to go with the guard. To go home with the guard. We need to go with the Holy Spirit, the guard of Israel home. We're going to go to eternity. This is the invitation. Return so that we can both go together to the house of the Father to be in the presence of the Lord. Because the morning will come. The rapture of the church will happen. And then afterwards, 
There will come in the night. There will come a period of great affliction and tribulation. And desire of the Lord is that you participate on this morning, on this new day, like the children sing, a new day is born. If you participate on this new day, that we will be with the Lord in eternity. Amen. So then the guard says, the morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire, return, come back. Hallelujah. As we were praying for the service, the Lord has shown a woman. I'm going to read the gift as it is. Uh, then we're going to explain the discernment. A woman was driving a car and uh, it, she ran out of gas. And the place where the car ran out of gas was a place that was dark. And she was afraid because 
could be in these places of darkness, something that could cause some harm to her life, and she and that cause of fear. And after a while, the brother said, like a three hours, an angel came to where this woman was. The angel would would bring a lamp with oil. And this lamp was lit. There was oil and light and fire on this lamp. And the angel put the lamp on top of the tank, gas tank of the vehicle. And the, the tank was filled. And the angel asked a question to that woman. Why did you let the fuel to run out? And she said, I was not paying attention to the signs of the panel of the display in the car. I didn't pay attention, so then the fuel, I ran out of fuel. So the car was refueled, and this woman was concerned with many things. And the angel told her, you can go, you can return to your daily shores. But this woman instead went straight to the church. And what the Lord wants to show with this, the Lord is showing a person that at a certain point of her life, spiritual life, she stopped walking. The car stopped, no longer runs. She stopped in her spiritual life. And the detail is the fuel. In other words, is the absence of the Holy Spirit. Because we may walk alone, but then we'll run out of oil. Remember the, the parable of the ten virgins? The moment of the midnight, and the moment in which they needed to have uh, light in their lamps, there was no light because they ran out of oil. So it is showing a spiritual situation of this sister moment of lack of light uh, or direction of the Holy Spirit for her life, a moment in which she's not understanding what is surrounding her and it causes fear. But there is a question, there is a help from the Lord. The watchman of Israel went there to help her, to manifest His grace, His favor, His mercy. And then comes a question, why did you allow it to happen? We cannot allow things to get too war too bad in our lives, spiritual lives. There's a text in the Bible that speaks of a woman that was sick for um, 12 or 13 years. I, and once she has spent everything that she had, she had nothing left, then she sick, sought the Lord Jesus. And I always ask myself, why didn't she seek Jesus before? She would not have lost any, anything. She would have received the blessing, would not have lost all her possessions. When she allowed the situation to get to a critical moment, that's when she sought the the Lord Jesus. But the Lord Jesus, in the vision, he filled up the tank, and, and like God always does, a free will, he allowed to go uh, her own way. But she now understood that she needed to go back to the presence of the Lord because the morning is coming, and then afterward comes the night. And the desire of the Lord is that you return, that you come back to the presence of the Lord. Because at any moment, we will be with the Lord in His eternity. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Lord, we adore you and praise you. We're thankful because we're once again in your house, in your presence, for once again for you, you to manifest in our midst, your love and your grace, your mercy, Lord, your invitation of the Holy Spirit to participate, Lord, in the wedding of the Lamb, to be with you in eternity, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. For all of those things, we plead, Lord, that you may receive us in the throne of grace, our praise, our adoration. Give us also waking your blessings in your presence. Take us home in your peace. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit to be with the, the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to an end. That you, my brother and sister who are with us, there is a gift showing a, a man or a woman, and there is a desire from the Lord. That there is an invitation from, the, from God to your life so that you come, so that you go to Jesus, so that you find the answers that you are seeking, so that you may be ready for this new heaven and this new earth. The desire of the Lord is to save us, to save you. Uh, you are welcome to this place. We have service every week. We have uh, Wednesday a service with the women at 8 o'clock at the night. Thursday at 8 o'clock. We have uh, praise service Saturday at 7.30 of the night. Or another service of glorification. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10.30. And Sunday night at 7.30, a service of glorification of the Lord. We are all invited to participate. If you desire prayer for your life, a clarification of what has been said, the spiritual gifts that have been delivered from the word of the Lord, any question, just raise your hand so that we may be able to identify you. And the brethren who are in front of you will give you the proper assistance.